Meadows of the righteous. 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 Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Anbiya wal Mursaleen Amma ba'd Fa'audhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim As salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulullah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habib Allah As salatu wa salamu alayka ya Nabi Allah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nur Allah Welcome to our series The Meadows of the Righteous Today our topic it's a common question uh, I get asked a lot uh, that um, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love me uh, or how can I tell if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves me um, does uh, you know this this kind of hope uh, do we have that trust this this hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot of people are uh, kind of coming forward and asking these questions that I have less hope uh, I have committed so many sins uh, what's going to happen and verily 100% that there is um, this fear that we should have constantly that we have committed all these sins and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish me but at the same time there is this hope as well there is this hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may just pardon everything that I've done all the mistakes that I have made and the value or the main lesson uh, that the scholars, uh, the, the spiritualists have given in the past, the saints of Islam, they say that Al Iman Bain al Khawfi wa Rija, that Iman lies between fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having complete hope and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what the meaning of Iman is. You have to be right in the middle. Uh, so you, you can't just be completely fearful and have no hope in hope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy because uh, a person will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that he uh, his mind thinks of him so if his mind or if his heart tells him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful and all forgiving he will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that state or in that uh, that he will see that result as well um, if he f if fears that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to punish me, uh, this is not the state to pass away in. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Allah is more kind to his servant than how kind this mother is to her child. Allah is more compassionate to his servant, his creation, that more than how much this mother loves the child because that feeling of love remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created that compassion in the mother's heart for her to love her child and be attached to her child so much and Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an he says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the creation he wrote in the book that um, my mercy is far more superior, far more dominant than my punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created 100 parts of rahmah. One has been distributed amongst the creation. 99 have been retained for the day of judgment. When we have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do we not look towards his hope and his mercy? Uh, do we not have this trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You know, there's a common question that um, if God is true, then why is there all this, um, these tribulations that are on earth? Why is there always this kind of the wars and, and deaths and accidents, um, mass murders? If God was the true compassionate one, uh, why would he allow this to happen? And... Just simply uh, to understand this, uh, the simple answer is the, the dunya is a small portion of time. It's a small portion of time. A soul, a believer believes that our soul continues forever. If we go through some tribulations today, 
this is actually an investment for our hereafter. This is actually, in one way, a mercy for us in the hereafter that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a small tribulation in the dunya where we will only live for a small portion of time. But in the hereafter, um, there is endless blessings. Uh, on the other hand, if you take the other hand, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us endless mercies in the dunya, uh, would we ever want to leave here if there was no pain, if there was no anxiety, if there was no grief and hardship? Uh, why would we want to leave a place of happiness? Uh, the real eternal place of happiness is the hereafter. Uh, one of the key reasons for that is that's when a believer will be able to meet his creator. Um, that's when a believer will be able to get what he desires. Um, that's where there is a place uh, full of tranquility and peace. Um, that is his manifestation of his mercy. So this question asked in society now, um, the answer is we are uh, only but mortals in this dunya, in this world. Um, a small affliction in the world, a tribulation, a test in the world is very insignificant in terms of the time span of our existence. Uh, what happens after this is, is more, uh, there's a long way to go, there's a long process yet. And this um, A scratch that you feel uh, is only just a scratch. The pain that you feel, you will forget about. When you enter into the eternal bliss in the in Jannah, where we encounter the real mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will realize then that these tribulations uh, were, were nothing. Um, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy truly does dominate that. The Prophet said that Allah, the Almighty, he said that my slave has committed uh, sin. And he said, that servant said, O oh Allah, forgive my sin. My servant has committed sin. This is the second time. And he also recognized that he has a Lord that forgives sins. He committed the sin. And he also realized that there is someone to pardon this sin. And then... He again committed the sin again, he repeated the sin. But then he came back and asked for forgiveness as well. Ya Rabb, forgive my sin. And then he came back and done it again. And then he came back and committed the sin. God forgave him. And this kept happening. And then in the end, the narration says, I have forgiven my slave. He could do what he wants now. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is telling us that for as long as my servant asks for forgiveness, I will continue to forgive him. And that's all it takes. Just turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in hope that he will forgive you. He will. Just you recognizing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiving. This is a very noble act and something to understand. The Prophet ﷺ says, had you as a nation not committed sins as humans, if we did not commit sins, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would remove you and he would bring forward uh, a group of people, a nation that would commit sins. However, then they also go and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking repentance and then he forgives them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of his qualities, one of his characters, one of his names is Ghafoor. He is Ghafoor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives the sins of the sinners. So we must always have hope. We shouldn't always fear that I have done this. Will God ever forgive me? Will God ever forgive me? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to forgive a person for as long as he has not associated a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For as long as he has believed in Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the final messenger, for as long as he has believed in the Qur'an, the previous books that were revealed, everything that's within the Qur'an, he has abided and accepted what the Qur'an has to say, the angel's destiny. If he has believed in the, the fundamental principles of Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
will forgive him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us from amongst the ones who have complete hope. Amin bijahin nabiyya namin sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Meadows of the righteous 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 Meadows of the righteous